Hello, welcome back to like a week or so later, Mr. Adams board. Um, last we checked off, had it working, but the CPU was bad. So I went on the old e booger, and with the help of my patrons, I was able to procure another one of these bad boys that supposedly work. So this is from Mr. Daniel on eBay, and uh came from Indiana not too far away from me so this is actually on but not doing anything so I'm gonna remove this one that's bad we're gonna put this one in we're not doing any jumpers or nothing we're just putting it in and we're testing it energize there we go holy crap I was scared for a second there it took a little while the floppy delay there we go, 68030. I have a mouse only. I have not hooked up my keyboard. Memory, of course, is two megs only because that's all we have in it right now. One of the chips is bad. So I have to try and find another one of those. The uh, CIAs, everything else checked out in the past. The machine is working again. So it's been repaired. It's been repaired. It's been recapped. And uh, now, $170, one of these bad boys, $25 in caps, $5 new clock chip, these things just add up. And uh, it sucks when I have a really bad one where I got to replace something I don't normally replace because it really puts a hamper in on costs and time and it's a international shipping it's just a lot so that's a uh, probably gonna be it for this month in money wise of repairs because I just shot the wad but we saved another Amiga for Adam and I'm hoping that you'll get a lot of use out of it because your uncle left this to you so put it to good use but we're not done um, Adam wrote me an email and asked what we could do as far as the upgrade path for hard drives or acceleration or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the other side of the storage room over there and uh, I'm going to take a look at the storage side here and see what we can find out about. Uh, this sure does take a long time to boot. See so what we can find out about a IDE to compact flash type deal. I know I have a couple of those cards left, maybe. And if I do, we will build an image of Workbench 3, 3, 1, and get a base image on here with some normal goodies, directory opus, a couple utilities, maybe some music mod players and some things to test, sysinfo, Amiga test kit, AIBB, just so he has a working system turnkey. Boop, hit the button and she'll boot and she'll be good to go. I dug around the archives, and this is the thing I'm talking about. That's it. I haven't even opened it, so that's a good thing. There we go. This is a compact uh, SD to IDE. Um, it only does master, so that's what it's going to be. Now, as a test, I have a really long IDE cable because that's all I had. So I'm going to plug that in. 3.1 working, it says. So we're going to put that in there. And there we go. So there is my, there's install, here's my DH0 and all my stuff. I'm in a base color mode, which I'm going to fix. It's my old CNET here. Let's see, screen mode. NTSC high res lace. Let's crank the colors up here. We'll make it 16 so I can use it on anything here. NTSC high res laced 16 color. Put all this RAM in. Now, one of these is bad. It says bad on it. B -b -b bad. It's the one that was made in Canada. I don't like to put this RAM in too much. I'm going to wait for Adam to do it when he gets home because these tabs are just like, they're just hanging on there. I'm just in there to say, I'm here, but don't mess with me too much. So, 
a long time ago, about 3,000 years ago, I bought this 3,000, 4,000 keyboard adapter. Um, I'm going to use the 3,000 tower keyboard. Yes, a 3,000 tower keyboard. How do you know the difference? On an Amiga 3000 keyboard, which I guess I could show you, I'm going to show you the difference. So this, this is an Amiga 3000 keyboard. It has a short run with a coil and a short dude, right? Short plug. We'll just put that there. A 3000 tower keyboard has a long uh, keyboard, a, a longer coil, and a long end. Why? Because that SOB sits up so high, most people stuck them on the floor, and you wanted to have something that wasn't, you know, short like this, so you need a long guy. Physically, they look identical. There's no difference to them. So this will plug in to here, like that, and this will then plug in to the back. And this is not just your normal PS2 DIN converter. It's got the cable flips to match the Amiga. So I believe I got it in an Amiga kit years ago. All right, let's see if it works. Ready to get E? Oh, we do. Directory works. Whoops, that is okay. All right, we have... Uh, yeah, four megs of RAM, six megs of RAM, two megs of chip, two fours. So, so we're not seeing all of our memory because this chip isn't sticking down. This tab is just broken. I'm gonna hold this down. Just so we got our eight megs of RAM back. It's that chip that's just hanging on by a thread. One bad chip, a working machine, but it doesn't see uh, this memory card 16 gig because it's 3.0 ROMs so what we're going to do is we're going to boot install I need to get one of those DF0 terminators I'm going to order one of those things to plug into these boards to prevent that long delay in boot it's 10, 20, 30 seconds at times Here's a trick if you don't want to always write to disk. When you define new, if you put RAM colon, it'll write that to RAM. And I just call it drive because there's a bug in 31432. Sometimes you get an error when it can't read. Type whatever, assuming 26 or whatever. So now we're at negative 128 meg. That's fine. And this is written to RAM. So the next time I run this, this will be blank. It will not be here. It's in RAM. Okay? So, important little safety tip there. And now we can partition the drive. Uh, it is a 16 gigger, so we're going to delete this. Now, it's not going to see it all correctly. So, we're going to take it down like 3. So, DH0, advanced options. Yep, yep, yep. Not going to change the buffers. Nothing like that. Because I don't want to... So, I'm going to say new. Click over here. 947 megs. It's not right. See how it's weird and I take it down and she's back. This will be DH1. Remember this is 3.0 ROMs. DH1. Not bootable. This one is. This one isn't. New partition. Click. Drag it down. You'll still have room. What do I got? 2853. Yep. We'll give it the rest of it. We'll leave a little bit of room at the end there. How about that? This will be DH2. Alright, we're going to say OK. We're going to save change the drive. And we're going to say exit. Now, in theory, I should be able to reboot and see these drives. And then we'll be able to format them. Perfect. That's fine. What happened there, guys? My boot priority was higher and I wasn't paying attention. I have to boot off of my floppy. All right, look at all these bad boys. So we're just going to go like this and highlight these three and format them. All of them. It'll give me three little windows. See? So DH1 will be DH1. Yep. Fast file system. International mode like Jesus would choose. And we're going to always say quick format on a SD type of card. 
This is DH2. No trash can. And then finally, DH0 we're going to call system, just for reference. No trash can, fast file system, international mode like Jesus would use, and quick format. There we go. System, DH1, DH2. 16 gig card, carved up 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and that's all it's going to see even though it's a 16 gig card. If you had a newer ROM in here you'd see more but for 1993 that's what, or 92 on this one, that's what we got. What can I do? I can install the whole OS or I can just turn the machine off and grab this card and stick it in this card reader. Now I'm not doing capture card crap on this. I'm just going to zoom you on in. And I don't have my microphone hooked up or none of that crap, so it's just going to be me. So, yep, that's my chair. Here's my WinUAE thing, right? All my stuff is here. And my monitor's crooked for speed. I can turn that monitor because that'll correct the tripod crookedness. I need a 3.1 base. That's this guy right here. I'm going to load that config. And over here on CDs and expansions, because I ran this as administrator, I'm going to click Add Hard Drive here. And in this drop down, I'm going to click this little triangle thing. And I'm looking for that RDB. See this? 14.5 gig generic mass storage, 14.5 gig. It says RDB. Why does it say RDB? Because I pre configured it on the Amiga. Now you can create a hard disk image file and all that crap from this. No. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this as a Amiga 600, 1200. 4000 IDE device. Okay? Add to hard drive. Now I'm going to check my configuration here. Whoops. And make sure I am not a 4000T, that I am a 4000 and I have the correct ROM AC. AC. What are you talking about? AGA NTSC. And then we're going to go in here to my ROM and I'm going to put the exact same ROM. I have a Kickstart 3.1 A4000. I can actually put the 3.0. A4000 to match the machine I am actually working on. Okay, On my hard drives I can add another drive. I'm going to select the directory of shared. That's where I have like all my configs and stuff. And I'm just going to call it shared. Not bootable. Add it. Configuration. Save and boot. Now depending on the, the uh, priority of the hard drive I could be in my blank dude see system so I'm gonna reboot this and double mouse button it reset hold both mouse buttons down boot options let's make sure we're on the right one so UAE HF we're gonna do DH00 <laughs> malware bytes reports there's nothing wrong on my computer great and boot so this will boot my 3.1 install if I ever did it right and there it is that's OS 3.1 see so I'm going to go to my shared crap here. Yours will vary, okay, because I have like a whole bunch of stuff. I need directory works because it's a simple, I love that program. Directory works. Now I can go volumes, DH00, and then volumes, DH0, grab everything here and hit copy. What I am doing is writing this to that SD card. You can see blinking at the tip of my crusty finger. I am copying workbench. It's done. That's a bootable hard drive on my real guy. Take this right out, put it in my Amiga, and it will boot. Should I do that? Sure, why not? But first, inside of system, there is a system inside of OS 3.1. There it is. I'm going to hit F12 and quit. Taking the card out of my machine here, beep, literally, uncut, putting it in here, ah. pressing the button, boom, let's see what happens, does it, does it work or does it not work, it should work, and it should pop right up in a couple seconds with a blank 3.1 install, 
Boink. There we go. There's the exact copy of the machine I just made. Now that's just a base 3.1 because it's a 3.0 ROM and it will work. The idea is you would do this with DH1 or DH2 and you could add it to this machine like you just saw I did. Drag and drop programs. Now that shared directory I was creating on here is literally a volume from the uh, Amiga Forever. Gives you this Amiga files. And there's a directory called shared. And I have just dumped all of my systems and junk in there and installs and things on the PC side that mounts it on the Amiga and I can just access the files or drag and drop them in WinUAE but building a machine like that I didn't have to flip flop floppy disks now what I do do is I always RDB my systems on the real thing just to make sure I got the thing ironed out because I have went through and formatted it on the when you eat and it doesn't always work out because I'm forgetful and I forget to set the machine type or the right IDE or I choose the wrong ROM so make sure you pay attention to what you're doing unlike me where you might just forget or get involved in 82 different things now what I can do is this we have a bootable working 3.0 machine 8 megs of RAM blah 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 take this card again put it in here on your icon maybe different mine's at the top I'm gonna to right click on that icon and I'm gonna say run as administrator and that again is gonna load this thingy when you AE and if I had a grease weasel which I do I haven't had plugged in I can add that here under floppy disks nope let's load my config first so we'll load this 3-1 base and I could go to floppies here and I could drop this down to grease weasel or floppy bridge which is the draw bridge from uh, Rob Smith so it's the Grease Weasel Cure Fraser so it's going to yell if it doesn't detect it you know that's okay you don't have to run that um, I just usually leave it as it was put a couple discs in there if you want um, make sure she's on turbo and save it and then just launch it now oops I forgot I have to add that hard drive back in oh I did add it great I saved it with it. If I did not, I would do this. Oops, add hard drive. Drop this down to RDB, right? Make sure it is on this proper machine. Commodore A600, A1200, A4000 IDE. Gotcha. And start. And she will boot. And here's my system, because that's what I needed. OS 3.1 was the boot device of the original WinUAE image everything is cool we have a working Amiga let's put some music mods on it let's copy MUI alright good enough for now let's uh, F12 quit that grab this card out of here whoa grabbing the card out you know the deal sticking it dropping it and uh, we have the audio hooked up hitting the button don't have DF0 plugged in so she's gonna act a little bit more uh, delayed while it checks for the floppy disk and then says oh, I don't have one but I'll boot anyway there it goes just look for the disk and it's booting there and it's up that was quick now what you can do is also copy some hard drive icons but I'm not doing that right now play volumes H2 mod all of them play it We can jam the music mods again, so that's cool. And just play away. Sounds great. Great mod. So mods are working. I'm gonna install MUI and all that mess. The basics to get this machine running. And it's this is on the real Amiga. You could do it virtually too if you wanted to. Just make sure you choose the correct target. Both Hippo players work. Witch Amiga. Let's see if the Witch Amiga works. Yep. You are a 4,000 at 25-ish megahertz. Blah, 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 blah. You're a 4,000. Groovy, groovy benchmarks. But you get the idea. So anyway, that is another Amiga. 4,000 with very expensive parts tossed in. And we'll be back in action. And i got to find another RAM chip for this if I can. So by the time this video comes back out, Mr. Adam should have his 
4,000 back in action, and I hope it's serving you well. So thank you to my patrons and supporters for helping me afford these repairs and the parts that are getting more expensive that go into them. And I'm going to try and see if I can salvage this thing offline somehow and replace the FPU. Maybe a socket. I've replaced both chips. There's nothing to it. Only thing left is this guy, and they're getting expensive too. So we'll see what we can do. But thank you all for your support. Thank you guys for watching. Another Amiga has been saved. So until next time, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned something.